Hello and welcome to Keto Mom Community. My name is Steve Melky and I'm here with the one, the only, the most loveliest lady in all the land, loveliest my wife, <laughs> Stephanie Melky, AKA Keto Mom. Good morning. And we are super excited to talk to you today. All right, morning puzzle. They're almost done. So close. Like, I don't know, 20 pieces left. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I get a lot of questions of where this came from. My husband made it for me for my birthday. It's Shutterfly. Super simple. He uploaded puzzle pictures. Puzzle. Made a puzzle. No. Yeah, for my birthday. Yeah. yeah. No, it's not a secret. She wasn't telling she thought my, my sister made it. My amazing husband made it. And they're almost done. They were told they had to be done by Sunday because we need the table, right? Yes. Good morning walk down our dirt road, around the lake, right? Yep. What a lovely morning. <laughs> Just busting out some school and work. I need new pants. All right, today was a little bit frazzling. The morning was a little frazzled. I don't think I lost my EQ, but I was not a happy camper for a little bit. What? I thought we were reading because we weren't very fun. It's not true. Not true. And there was just a lot of stuff going on, but we just got done with a Zoom. It was super great <laughs> with Erin McManus on the art of communication. So I was going to have Amelia share one thing she learned from the Zoom. Um, that you should only care about the people you care about, meaning you shouldn't let the opinions of other people that doesn't really matter affect you. Right. So we're actually going to do our next, her next podcast is going to be on social media, the things that people post, what they say how you handle criticism, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. so it's not that you don't care about other people, but you should honestly only care about the opinions of the people that you care about mm -hmm. and the people that care about you. So we'll be doing a podcast. If you did not watch her last podcast, I think we've done three of them. Mm -hmm. Who is she becoming? We did words, the power of your words. We talked about your identity and then we talked about modesty. So this next one will be about social media and people. Yes. And our day is going much better now that our kids have school done. All of, the plethora of things that we had to do this morning. We just feel She's like. To her vocabulary. <laughs> Listen, Erwin taught us today that we need to use more textured words, textured, explanational words that give meaning, but not just boring words. We're not allowed to talk boring. So you are about to get. Your mind's blown with a plethora of words that we're going to start using. Yeah. My husband is astonished with the words that I'm using as he's looking at his dirt <laughs> and how windy it is. Hey, babe, are you astonished at the vocabulary that I have been using? Babe. Fiddlesticks. I'm rambunctious. <laughs> oh, fiddlesticks. I'll get better at this. I didn't go to the gym today because I wanted to be on the Zoom with Erin McManus. And I told her to be in my live this morning. I was going to do 100 burpees because that was the workout at the CrossFit gym. So I have three witnesses. I just did 100 burpees, right? They are my witness. Yeah. All done. All right, here is your daily reminder. But listen, social media is a highlight reel. Like, way highlight reel. You don't see people's yuck. You just don't. And so if you're scrolling through and you're thinking, I'm not as successful as her, my marriage isn't as good as hers, my kids are, whatever the case may be, please, please, please know that 
you were watching like little snippets of people's lives and you didn't see me bark at my husband today. You didn't see me get mad because I couldn't get on a Zoom. You didn't see me get frustrated with one of my daughters because she was asking me for help and I was helping somebody else. Like you didn't see the yuck, but we all have it. So I promise you, we all have it. Even the most perfect person has, Ugh. right? And I had a great conversation with one of my friends today and I was telling her, I said, listen, everybody has stuff in their life. And if you feel like you, for whatever reason, are missing something, I'm going to go over the spokes that my husband and I talk a lot about on uh, our lives, about the different spokes, makes up a tire in your life, things that you need to make sure you're focusing on. Like if one of the spokes is broken, it feels like all of the other ones are broken. So stay tuned. I'm going to talk about that in a second. I just grabbed the most famous Emory Praise Milky. She's so amazing. And... I'll send it in just a minute. I'll explain what I'm talking about. I just want you to know, you're amazing. You are worthy. You've got gifts and talents. This world needs, the world needs you. It doesn't need you gawking at everybody else. They need you. People need you. So get out of your yuck and know that you are worth it and you are worthy and do the next step that you need to do. What is the next thing you need to do? I know I saw it in life. Like what is your next step? What are you focused on? What are your goals? If you don't know what they are, how can you achieve them? Okay, right, real quick, I drew this for you. It's probably gonna be backwards, but here is what I was talking about. I was talking about this with my friend. Of course, it's backwards. Think of your life as like a tire, right? A circle. And you've got, you've got things in your life that make up your life. So you've got your spiritual, your relationships, finances, your physical health, and emotions, right? And if one of the spokes is broken in this tire, you're going to you're going to not feel like you're being very effective. Or you might feel like you've got a void. Or if one of these spokes is broken, it almost feels like well it does. It affects all of the spokes. So having having an awareness of where you're at on these different spokes, like rate yourself 1 through 5. Where am I physically? Where am I spiritually? Where am I emotionally? Children. Where am I with our finances? And whichever one feels the most broke, then you work on that. And sometimes you can't fix them all. Like I had a conversation with my friend and I was like, where's the most broke? Like if you had to, if you were going to fix all of these, if you feel like they're all falling apart, where do you need to start? What do you want? What are you focused on? Uh, I remember a book that we, I just got this book for our daughter, Amelia. It's called Cazone. And the author is Craig Rochelle. Again, it's backwards. I got it off Amazon. This book is incredible. This was one of the first books my husband and I went through and it's basically going to, it's really just discovering and pursuing God's purpose for your life. And he takes you through a whole bunch of different things. He takes you through kind of road mapping your life out. And I'm pretty sure I got this concept from here, but I did, couldn't find it in the book. I can't remember exactly. There's so many places that talk about spokes or your life or your focuses or the different the different compartments in your life however you want to visualize it I like to look at it as a tire because if one of them is broken then the other ones it would affect so it's just not actually having a balance but making sure you are I don't know would it be like meeting it's not like meeting criteria here's the deal if something's broken you've got to I see what he did from years ago from the very first version he's revised the book so right basically he said your spoke should be your relationship with God, and then it's your relationship with people, and then he goes into other spokes. So he's changed a little bit. I don't remember it being like that, but but actually I love that way better because, oh, finances, so it's your relationship with God, relationship with people, so relationships in general, whether it's your spouse or your kids, your financial, uh, physical, so it's your health and fitness, and let's see what the fifth one is. So that would be your fourth one. And then he would say your fifth spoke, we're almost there, is work or your environment. So those are the spokes that he talks about in this book. Anyways, it's an incredible book. I highly recommend getting it. This is one of the very first books that Steve and I ever went through. And I was reminded of it the other day. And I thought, oh my goodness, my kids need to do this book. The last thing I'm going to say is this. Uh, when I was talking to my friend, I said, all right, you can have all of the things in this world. You can have finances. She's great with her health and fitness. You can have great relationships. And I said, the number one thing that will wreck all of it is if you don't have a relationship with God, like his first spoke. And so whether you agree or disagree, like that is my personal stance. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus and it's not knowing, 
It's knowing. It's not knowing. I said, listen, you know there's a God, but do you know him? Because that will fill the void. That will fill the missing piece. That will fill the the anxiety that you're worrying about life or not having enough or not feeling like you're being fulfilled. That is the missing piece. And once you get that, the rest of it will fall into place. People ask me how I stay motivated. I don't. I stay consistent. Here we go. The L- Look at the hail. Oh my goodness. Oh, look at this. Look at these. Look at these. Whoa. Ice chunks. <laughs>